That's a part of the same thing Jesus said in red. You got to deny yourself. And you got to bear a cross, of course. That's just the way it is. The fruit of it is outstanding. My kids told me, I, I set them down. I went back to them, and I felt like I, my religious duty was to let them know I'm sorry. They said, for what? They didn't even know. So God had take care of it, took care of it. It was a burden I carried. They didn't carry it. They said everything was fine, Dad. You did for us the way you should have did. He was always there for us. But the enemy tried to invert it and make you think, man, what I could have, would have, should have, could have. <laughs> But back to the broadcast again. God has placed an anointing on a body. There's not an anointing on one individual anymore. We're not in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, you had to have kings, priests, and prophets. Now, the whole body is a king, priest, and prophet. It's a prophetic spirit that has been distributed upon the body of Christ. To them that have an ear to hear, they can function in dimensions of his grace that they never thought before. The prophetic yeah. word will come. Not that you're a prophet, that you got to get your card, get your flyers out. But there's a corporate cluster of pro prophetic grace on the house. Yeah. When a leader is accepted as such, and I, I've come to turn because I was raised in a house that functioned in that way. My pastor, Pastor Buford, had no holes barred. You could, whatever I do, you could do because that's discipleship. Yes, yes. Discipleship says whatever I do, you can do. Yes. Remember Jesus? Yes. Jesus was doing his ministry. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm limited in this physical body, but let me go ahead and share the wealth. Yes. Brought him up where he was, spent time with him, sold into him. Then all of a sudden, they were able to do the very things he was doing. Yes. That's why we have Luke 9 and Luke 10. They were casting out devils, healing the sick, raising the dead, because he was doing that. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know what, Apostle? I, I got to pray about it. No. No, you ain't no praying about it. You're supposed to hear the voice of God. Right. Why? Because I hear it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That should expand your horizons to new heights. If you never heard the voice of God before, if you never even put yourself in a position to, to receive His voice, to hear from His voice, knowing that it's, it's normal, Amen. from that day, from that point you joined this ministry, you say, Wow. I can speak in tongues. <gasps> I thought it ceased. They told me at that other church, that rascal told me you don't have to speak in tongues. <laughs> that person told me speaking in tongues is not for the day. Wow. You probably at a denomination church that speaking in tongues is not for the day. You get over here and find out, <gasps> you can speak in tongues? There's a language from God? Yes! Amen. That should set your wheels in motion. There is no way you can tell me you're just going to come here and just suck. Without having the intention to know, man, my God, you mean he wants to share the wealth with me? Yes. He wants me to partake of an eternal blessing? Yes. That not only am I having a life to live, but there's something in the next dimension. My credit is being stored up every time I function in my true identity, every time I live in my true identity, and every time I walk in obedience and I'm submitted to it, that I'm laying up things that moth and corruption and religion and tradition can't steal anymore. <laughs> Ministry, and let me just say this. I'm going to give it out there with just a break. Let me get to my message. I'm going to about it. That's why I am so, I'm so passionate. That's why I get mad. You know, that's why I put on my thing. People say that it don't matter what church you go to. I'm going to I see that somebody put on. I said, help me, Dad. I almost went ballistic. That's like saying if I'm going to the mall and I go down, no, you go down here on East Jefferson, you can get on any bus you want. And you can make up your mind and say, you know what, I'm going to get a pass and get on that bus. You want to go to the mall? And you get on that bus, that bus says, I'm not going that way. And they say, well, sir, if you would have looked on the front of the bus, it said 507. I could have, yeah, what, 502 to the mall? Yeah, 502 to the mall. And you on 411. <laughs> but, and you just going to ride with us wherever we go. Pretty much. 
when you could have got on the bus and was going to the destination that God has assigned for you. Just you just took a ride. Yeah, it's a waste of time. It's, yeah, it's a waste of time. And we sit around and say, oh, just go. Don't worry about it. God will take care of the rest. You lying. There's prophets. There's kairos. We don't live that way. Kingdom people don't live that way. We, we intentional. We know every act we do has a response. We, amen? We know that. We live in that dimension. When you're kingdom, People say, well, it don't matter. Well, well, I tell you what, uh, let you better hope that if you have to go to the doctor, he didn't spend all his time at, oh, fixing cars. <laughs> you get in there and start playing on you. And think that, <laughs> you know, he, don't, he look at that liver and say, I, I, I don't know what's about that <laughs> You want him to be uh, uh, pretty uh, studious, don't you? Right. Proven, tested, am I right? Yeah. It's the same concept, y'all. It's not pick and choose church. Pick and choose where I'm going to go. Your destiny is in something. It's the hardest thing for me to know that God has a destiny for somebody and we have to keep quiet. And I know it. I'm like, I, I, God, I got something so much better for me. I can feel it. I can see it. And you can hear it say, hey, there will be an important, important part of the ministry. And then we just act like it just don't matter. But it does. <coughs> Everything matters. Yes. Yes. And then what happened, the enemy got to send a substitute. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or somebody that's not uh, really been, God never put it in them for, for that place, for that position. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> ministry is important. If ministry to the body is important, your placement is important. Yeah. Yeah. God has given us people that have a, a affinity to his heart to bring us into places that he's assigned for us from the foundation of the world. Your steps are from the foundation of the world. Nothing happens by happen chance. It's a directive of the Lord. Amen? And God has put this anointing upon each of us. We have to cultivate it. We have to nurture it. We have to submit to it. It needs wisdom. It needs consultation. It needs guidance. It needs hands on. It's not my goal just to raise up uh, uh, spiritual sons and daughters. I know I've been called to do it, but it that's not the totality of my grace. I'm not just overly excited or enthused, intoxicated, so I can get you off and get you to your next destination. That ain't my goal. My only goal, my main goal, is that the anointing you carry, that you come into a relationship with your headship, with Jesus. He's going to keep you out of a whole bunch of stuff. So I believe in the equal distribution of the grace of God upon the whole body. I believe, what? In the equal distribution of the grace of God upon the whole body. He made all of us ministers. That don't mean all of us going to get ordained. Right? I know some people who are ordained and they just go ahead and get their paper back. <laughs> My bag, I blew it. I'm going to wait a little bit, huh? Seriously. I know some folks who just need to go ahead and say, you know what, call, call up here and say, you know what, I need second thoughts. <laughs> Y'all think I'm lying. It's not a game, man. It's to build up people, to release them into what God has called us into, not me into, us into. God has deposited his nature in a body. And the Antichrist spirit, the ultimate immune disease, won't allow that body to come to fruition. It keeps denying his coming. His coming where? Through the skies? No. His coming up out of his temple, coming up out of his people, coming out of his body. Until we understand that the full gospel is equivalent to the restoration and the activation of every spiritual quality. We observe in the life of Jesus. Every quality that you observe in the life of Jesus, that is what the full gospel is about. People say, I'm a full gospel church. And, and most of them, when they say full gospel church, they only say, we speak in tongues and stop there. Because that's what they, in the 80s and 90s, when you talked about full gospel businessmen or full gospel church, it means that they accepted uh, speaking in tongues, being baptized with the Holy Ghost. But the full gospel the 21st century? No, 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 no. 
It's the restoration and activation of every spiritual quality that we can go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and see in his life. He had the spirit without measure. And of his fullness, we all receive. Am I right? That's what the Bible is saying. So it's imperative. We can't operate in the grace that's independent of the body. That's autoimmune disease. When I'm, if I can prophesy more outside of these doors than I can among my kind. Oh, boy. Well, I prophesy. I have a prophesy, Apostle. I, I, I can prophesy to 10 people. Them 10 people don't know nothing about you. <laughs> Let us 10 people over here find out if you prophesy right. right. Come on. I was telling tell the Apostle Peter, I said, man, we was just cracking up. He said, you were tearing me up. He said, tearing you up how? Man, he, he, I'm telling you, I was prophesying for the first person. I was prophesying like I knew what I was doing. I was a, I was a little green behind my ear. I had a little similac. And for me, I'll be having my ear, and I just just knew I was the still. I didn't feel that way, but it, it, it projected. I'm prophesying to people. I mean, the anointing went boom, 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 boom. You know, and you heard the story. He used to check me all the time. I could, I could probably, if we had about two years, I could tell you all the stuff. I wasn't bad, but I allowed him to put his hands on me. Can't do that today? Oh, he can't do that. We get so offended when pastors or pastors tell us something. Yes. We do. We, we shut down off the top. Uh, I, I trust the prophet and prophet as long as they tell me what I'm doing is right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop this and get back to my business. There's a manifold grace that ought to be conferred over the whole body.